Yo, what's up, guys? Today we are reacting to this video. Chris Hadfield, apparently he doesn't have it anymore. Uh, on SpaceX, rocket exploding. It was enormous, enormously successful. That's what he mentioned in the interview, I guess. So we're going to watch this and react to this. And guys, if you haven't seen my other SpaceX reactions, then you guys can go check it out. I have made a playlist for space stuff. You can check that out on my channel as well. Let's go. Let's see what he had to say. Was icing on the cake. What? Was icing on the cake. That's how the video starts? Was icing on the cake. I was so confused. Why were people cheering and clapping that the, the, the spaceship blew up? You know, I was, I was, when I saw it live, I was like, whoa, what? Well, that was the moment that SpaceX's giant new rocket exploded after blasting off on its first test flight. Not what the company or NASA perhaps were hoping for. SpaceX putting on a brave face. You heard all that applause, calling it a successful failure does raise some questions, though, about NASA's timeline for a planned return to the moon. To discuss more, let's bring in Chris Hadfield, Canadian astronaut extraordinaire, former commander of the International Space Station, author of The Apollo Murders and the upcoming book, The Defector. Hey, Chris, good to see you. This dude, Chris, he is probably the most famous astronaut. At least uh, I know him from uh, a lot of experiments that he has done. Um, and he's kind of like this post spokesperson right i don't know much about nasa you know or or space stuff this is my third video on this topic but i have watched a, a handful of his videos um you know all of those experiments with the water like the you know the cloth uh, stuff like that um and it's it's very nice to see him you know in, in action so let's see what he has to say Good to see you as well. And yeah, you say people are putting on a brave face. You have it completely wrong, Todd. This was an enormously successful test flight. I, I used to be a, a test pilot in the Royal Canadian Air Force and the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Air Force. This was a terrific day. We learned an enormous amount, and it really bodes well for the future. So tell me, because at first glance, Chris, you know, people see a rocket taking off and it blows up, and they think, hmm, that doesn't seem like a success, though. But walk us through why, why it is. Well, the first flight of the F-14 crashed. The first flight of the F-16 wasn't even supposed to be a flight. It went out of control and the pilot barely limped into the air. The Wright brothers crashed more times than you can count. One of them almost killed Orville Wright. People don't normally see test operations. They just see like airlines and expect okay. everything to be perfect. But this was the very first orbital attempt of the biggest rocket ever built, 33 engines, a vehicle that can give us wow. capability we've never had before. And at the end, you say it explodes. I, I think they they destroyed it on purpose. It's got destruction circuitry on it so that it, you know it's not a threat to anybody on the ground. I think they, they sent the, the auto destruct command to it. But, but they learned so much before that. So, so yeah, it may have looked to the untrained eye that uh, that this wasn't what they wanted. This was enormously successful and really paves the way toward what's coming next. So pushing the self-destruct button, perhaps, Chris, because it started to veer off course, is that what you think may have been the reason? Oh, well, um, they were losing engines. Mm. If, if you look carefully at the video of the 33 engines, I counted five that they had lost when, when we could no longer see up the tailpipe. And after that, they, they just were losing more engines. And as soon as you lose a critical number of engines, you can't steer anymore. And the vehicle was no longer steering. And then once they know for sure they couldn't get any more out of it, then just for safety. I mean, when I flew on the space shuttle twice and the Soyuz, there was a similar capability to blow up the vehicle in case it was threatening you know, non-astronauts on the ground. So all of that is normal. It's just part of good safety. And uh, and they are, I mean, they cleared the tower. They made it through the speed of sound, through maximum pressure. They made it above most of the atmosphere. I think it was 2,000 kilometers per hour, that like 2,100, something like that, which was the max speed. They learned an enormous amount about how that vehicle flies today. Okay, so what's next here, Chris? What do you think we're going to see in the months ahead? Build another one. Well, there's a whole bunch of analysis now. Find out what failed and why and how. 
and then go back through and check their designs and then fix whatever doesn't work. You learn a huge amount from your first try. And then, I mean, it's sort of like a model airplane. You can build all the model airplanes you want, but until you throw one, you don't know if it's an airplane or not. So they need to modify things before they make their next uh, test flight. Uh, just a natural, necessary part of the development of an aerospace vehicle. Elon said a couple months, three months, they'll give it another try. And that's a reasonable timeline. Depends what they discover now out of all the the data, the telemetry that was coming down, you know, how much they learned and how much, how quickly it'll, they can, they can, incorporate the changes okay also i just want to say uh, i saw a few comments in my last video people were saying that elon musk was actually worried that it would blow up upon um um turning on the engines right and his biggest fear was if it blew up the the launch pad and they cleared the tower so that's all they wanted uh at least but I also saw that it was scheduled for 90 minutes. So, you know, if they could have done the whole 90 minutes, if they could have, you know, detached and, and seen the capabilities of the rocket itself, then that would have been, you know, a milestone, a, a huge breakthrough. But I think we're going to have to wait a few more months to see that happen. Okay, talk to me as well about Artemis 3. So this is the upcoming mission. Uh, we don't know exactly the timeline there, but to return astronauts, as you know, to the moon and using some of the technology, of course, from this rocket. So what does this event today mean for that mission? Well, I think it's, it's a, a critical first important step. And um, obviously, Jeremy Hansen and a crew of three Americans are going to the moon on Artemis 2. Um, which is an entirely different rocket ship. And then they'll fly that rocket ship again, you know, which is the Artemis vehicle, not this one. This is the vehicle of the future, and, and it's pushing the edge of all the technologies. And But this one will be, you know, simpler and eventually more proven, and therefore it ends up being a lot cheaper. So that's why it's headed this way. But hardly anything works the very first time you try it. And, and the, today, they got a lot further than I thought they were going to. So huge congratulations to all the people, including all the Canadians that work at SpaceX. Yeah, and just before we go, when you were watching this, what was going through your mind as someone who is so familiar you know, with, with, with space travel and you're watching this thing take off? And you know, what were you thinking about, Chris? You know, I find myself clenching and unclenching my fist. To oh. Try to oh, I'm glad that he mentioned his fist because, you know, that would have left a very weird, odd image in, in our minds. Somehow, that's going to help the rocket get up to space. But, but I was watching in great detail, you know, what's failing, what's not working the way they planned. And I was just uh, so impressed with the, the level of control and how far they got on their very first test. If you go back to the early days of rocket test, you know, this was a pretty common occurrence. They made it a long ways downrange. They still have a long ways to go, but today was a great big first step. Chris Hadfield, Canadian astronaut, former commander of the International Space Station and author of the upcoming book. There it is, The Defector, which is coming out. When's that coming out, Chris? October 10th. October 10th. I love it. Thanks so much for taking time for CTV. We always love having you. Okay, that's cool. That's that's very good. So he he says it's an enormous enorm why can't I say that word today? Enormously successful mission. Um test actually. It was I don't know. I still have my reservations. I I still think that they're playing it off cool. You know, of course they did get enough data. But you you always want to pass the test. You don't want to fail the test. That's the basic rule. You always want to pass the test, and it's sad when you don't. Um, in any case, I think they did get another, uh, gather enough um, data so that they can build a better and bigger version of the Starship, which, rest in peace. <laughs> it blew up. Okay. It are you deed. Um, but yeah. Hopefully, we're going to see something in the future. And guys, let me know your comments in the comment section. And I'll see you on the next one. If you want me to make more videos like this, let me know in the comments where should I start? What video should I react to? And thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.